Okay, in this uh, video, we'll be looking at um, the part 2 of uh, aldol condensation. And here we're going to deal with uh, some very specific examples. So this is aldol condensation part 2. Now, as we had discussed in the previous video, the aldol condensation happens when you use two carbonyl compounds and uh, with the requirement that at least one should have one alpha hydrogen. Now, generally, we can use, uh, let's say, a carbonyl compound A and 2A gives you a product which combines the two aldehydes in the form of an aldol. So, this is known as uh, self-aldol because here you are taking the same molecule and doing the condensation with the same molecule. For example, if you remember the example that we did in the previous video, we had taken acetaldehyde and two molecules of acetaldehyde had condensed and this gave us a alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. This is an H. Okay, so that is called the self aldol. Now, the um, second proposition is what is known as the cross aldol. Now, in the cross aldol, we take two different molecules, two different carbonyl compounds, and make the reaction happen. Now, in case both of them possess alpha hydrogens, then if you take molecule A and molecule B, and we treat them with uh, dilute base, then you can get a result of A combining with A, AA aldol, you can get ABB aldol, you can get AB aldol, and there are two versions of AB aldol because A can lose the alpha hydrogen and attack B, and B can attack, B can, you know, um, release the alpha hydrogen and attack A. So you, in a way, end up getting four products which uh, would be very similar to each other. They'll all be aldehydes or ketones and very similar properties, so very difficult to separate. So this kind of a cross aldol is not beneficial in terms of production of any particular compound. But a cross aldol would be, uh, would be beneficial if one carbonyl compound did not have one carbonyl compound did not have alpha hydrogens at all. For example, we can use the simplest aldehyde, formaldehyde. So if I were to take formaldehyde, which doesn't have an alpha hydrogens, remember these hydrogens are not alpha hydrogens, they are the hydrogens attached to the functional group. And if you treat them with acetaldehyde, then there is only one scope of a product. Of course, there are two possibilities even here. You can get a self-aldol of uh, acetaldehyde with acetaldehyde, and you have a possibility of acetaldehyde with formaldehyde. But the carbon, this carbonyl carbon of the uh, formaldehyde, that is more electrophilic in nature. And therefore, the chances of the carbon 9 of the acetaldehyde meeting the carbonyl carbon of the formaldehyde is much more than, than the carbon ion of the acetaldehyde meeting the carbonyl carbon of another molecule of acetaldehyde. So the, the uh, major product that we would expect out of here is going to be HCH double bond CH2 C double bond O H. And the logic is that this forms the carbon anion CH2 negative C double bond O H, and this meets the carbonyl carbon of the formaldehyde, which is more electrophilic because it is less hindered as well as uh, there is no alkyl group attached to it that can have a plus I effect that would make it less uh, electrophilic. So this carbon then attacks this carbon, the pi bond shifts to O, and you would get uh, HCO negative, HCH2 
C double bond O H. This would take the proton from water and you would get H CH OH CH2 C double bond O H. This is the aldol reaction. And then we heat this, we'll get the dehydrate product, which would be alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Okay. So this would be the situation if we take one carbonyl compound with the alpha hydrogen and the other without. We can do a similar reaction with uh, benzaldehyde because even benzaldehyde doesn't have the alpha hydrogens and we can take in this particular case um, again acetaldehyde that's the simplest aldehyde with the alpha H and treat it with uh, dilute base. Now the reason we take dilute base is because OH- minus can also function as a good uh, nucleophile. So when you keep the concentration of OH- minus low, its tendency to act as a nucleophile decreases. The number of hits attacking the carbonyl carbon uh, by the OH- minus decreases because of low concentration. So essentially the OH- minus would then behave as a base instead of a nucleophile. So in this particular case we'll get pH CH double bond CH2 C double bond OH and if you remember in the previous video I told you that whenever there is a phenyl ring that can be conjugated with a double bond then aldol condensation happens without this part of heating it can happen on its own so the moment it gets protonated it will automatically dehydrate because this double bond is not only conjugated with the double bond O of the carbonyl compound but also with that of the phenyl ring okay so this is a cross aldol now in case you take a ketone which has the alpha H with aldehyde without alpha H then this particular cross aldol is known as Claisian um, let me get the spelling right it's Claisian Schmidt Schmidt condensation. It's called Claisian Schmidt condensation. Now, one of the very typical examples taken here is two mole of benzaldehyde reacting with acetone. It's a very uh, very typical reaction and one benzaldehyde is attacked by this alpha carbon the other one is attacked by this alpha carbon and we get the product as pH CH double bond CH CO CH double bond CH PH so um, let me just so pH CH double bond CH CO CH double bond CH pH now this is uh, you can see that you can have a cis trans isomerism here you can have a cis trans isomerism here we get the major product which is trans trans and the logic is very simple this one loses the uh, proton it forms a carbon anion and uh, this attacks this and you get a dehydration product here very similar to this and then this one also loses the carbon anion and this attacks the another molecule of benzaldehyde because this would have already got hindered uh, you know one carbon once it attaches to the benzaldehyde it would have got hindered so it would th the chance of the other one attacking it more and this would also lead to extended conjugation you can see double bond double bond and double bond three double bonds in conjugated in series that makes the product extremely stable now another way of uh, carrying out a cross aldol with more effectiveness is by converting one carbonyl compound completely into the carbonine into the carbon anion 
Now, uh, this can be achieved not by using hydroxide. Hydroxide is relatively a weak base. We use LDA, that's called lithium diisopropyl amide. Now, this essentially converts one particular um, carbonyl compound into the carbon anion, and uh, so we are able to get one product effectively. Uh, so, if we use a ketone, let's say I take, an, uh, I take one aldehyde with alpha hydrogens, and I take a ketone also with alpha hydrogen, and here we add LDA. This is called lithium diisopropyl amide. It is lithium diisopropyl amide. Its uh, formula is um, Uh, this is the isopropyl group, diisopropyl group. This is the amide, and this is the lithium part of it. So lithium diisopropyl amide is a very very strong base. You have the N negative here and Li plus here. So this negative is able to withdraw the uh, proton from either here or here. So what you do is you first treat. Uh, we'll take out the aldehyde for the time being because uh, we're going to first treat the the ketone with the LDA, uh, and the reason is, is basically that you know if we are able to take the aldehyde first, uh, of course we will get the carbonyl, but the expectation that the carbonyl of the aldehyde will attack the carbonyl carbon of the ketone is low because ketones have a less electrophilic carbon because they have got inductive effect occurring from both sides. Okay, so it is essentially going to happen that we get the carbon ion of the ketone and this attacks the aldehyde. That makes more sense. So this carbon anion of the ketone, this carbon anion of the ketone attacks the aldehyde now. So we first convert the entire thing into a carbon anion, the lithium salt, and then treat this with the aldehyde. And then now we have an, uh, we don't have any issue now. This will attack this. This will go up. And I'm writing the product post dehydration, the aldol condensation product, which is going to be CH. And uh, this uh, is attached here, and you get the OH here, if you remember. And this OH and this H would go, so there'll be a double bond here. CH, CH3. Okay, so this CS3 and this becomes a CH double bond part. So there's a double bond here, and these double bonds are conjugated. So this is achieved by using LDA, and um, that would make uh, the essential product to be a single product. Uh, otherwise, we always have a problem in a cross aldol situation. Thanks for watching this video.